In today's video, we are going to build this tip calculator using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. You can enter the build amount right here. Select a tip, including the option to input a custom tip, like 44%, and specify the number of people. As you can see, the app will automatically calculate the tip per person right here. Also the total per person, which includes the regular bill plus the individual tip, and the total bill for everyone. We'll be utilizing Next.js 13, the current latest version, which uses the app router and server and client components. So let's dive right in and get started. To get started, create a new Next.js app with this command. Then you will have to go through some prompts. Name the project wherever you like, but I will name it Tip Calculator. Next.js will also give you the option to select Tailwind CSS as a styling option. Select Yes and leave the rest as the default. Also install hero icons for this project. Hero icons is a set of free SVG icons that you can use in your project. To install it, run this command. With that, the project is set up. We first need to clean out the page.js file under the app folder. Then we also need to clean out the globes.css file. Keep the tailwind imports and replace the rest with the bluish background color. If you run the server now with npm run dev, your page should look like this. All the boilerplate code is now removed and we can now start building our app. First, let's set up the basic layout of our page. Go to the page.js file and remove the code we had in the beginning. We're going to use the main tag as a flex container. We will also add some padding to the page. Then we will add a heading with the text tip splitter. We will also add some merge to the heading and make it uppercase. Tracking adds some space between the letters and we want the text to be darker C in color. It should look like this now. We now want a white panel where the content of the app will be. For that, we will create a custom panel layout component. Let's create a new folder called components inside the app folder. Then create a new file called panel layout.js. This component is basically a white container with a max width and rounded corners and a shadow. Inside the container, we have a small padding so the children that are passed into it have some space. Then we can import the panel layout component or page.js file. Now we can see a small white container on the page. Inside the white container, we will have a form that will basically calculate the tip for us. So let's create a new component called tipform.js inside the components folder. The form is a grid container that will have two columns on large screens as seen in the beginning of the video. Now let's import our tip form component into our page.js file. Back to the tip form component, we want to turn this component to a client component since we want to use React hooks to keep track of the state of the form. Remember, in Next.js 13, every new component is a server component by default, so we need to explicitly tell React that this component is a client component. We can do this by writing use client at the start, even before the import statement. Then we can import the use state and use effect hooks from React. Now it's time to build the left side of the form. We will start with the bill amount input, create a new state inside the tip form first. This state would keep track of the bill, then create a new input component called bill amount in the components folder. In the tip form component, we will pass the state as props, so we want to first destructure the bill and set bill props inside the bill amount component. Then we create a label for the input. It has a light gray color and a small font size. Then we create a container for the input. We use the relative position so we can position the dollar sign left to the input. For the dollar sign, we will create a new div with the absolute position. We use the point events none class so the dollar sign doesn't interfere with the input. We also add some padding to the left of the dollar sign. We use the span element for the dollar sign to specifically target the dollar sign and give it a gray color and a small font size. Then we create the input. Keep in mind that even though we specified the type to be number, the values are still a string, but we need to convert it to a number later. Then we add the actual input itself. The input element has several classes assigned for it for styling purposes. It is a block element that takes up the full width of its container, has some rounded corners, no border, and a slight shadow. We add some padding to the left and right of the input, so the text doesn't overlap with the dollar sign and with the errors that appear on the input. Other styles include an outline none class to remove the default outline around the input when it's focused. The ring one class adds a thin gray ring around the input. 
The focus classes at the thicker CN colored ring around the input when it's focused. The value of the input is the build prop. We also add an on change event handler to the input so we can update the build state whenever the user types into the input. Now we can import the build amount component into the tip bomb component. We will wrap the build amount component in a flex diff that will align its children into a column. Since we will add the tip amount and the number of people input later, pass the build and set build props to the build amount component. Our form should look like this now. Now we want to create the tip amount input, create a new state for the tip amount in the tip amount component, then create a new component called tip amount in the components folder, import the use state hook, then create a new tips array. We don't need to use use client here because the tip amount component is inside the tip form component, which is already a client component. All the child components of tip form will be client components automatically. First, we distract the set tip prop from the props object. Then we create three new states. We have a state that checks if the custom component is selected, then one that stores the active tip, and finally, one that stores the custom tip amount. Add the label and then create a grid with three columns because we want six buttons in two rows. Inside the grid, we map over the tips array and render a button for each tip. We add a key to each button. The key will be the index of the tip in the array. We add a conditional to check if it's the custom tip from the array. If so, then we have another conditional to check if the custom tip is selected. If it is, we render an input. If it's not, we render a button. Otherwise, we render the button from the array. We add another conditional check if the index is the active tip. If it is, we render the button with the active style. If it's not, we render the button with the inactive styles. Before we can see the changes, we also need to import the tip amount component inside the tip form component. Now your grid will look like this, but it's not working yet, so let's add the logic to the buttons. We first create a handle tip click function that takes the index of the tip as an argument. We use this function to handle the click event on all the buttons except the custom tip. We first set set custom selected to false. This is to make sure that if the custom tip is selected, it's deselected when we click on another tip button. Then we check if the active tip is the same as the index. If it is, we set the active tip to null and return. This is to make sure that if we click on the same tip button, it's deselected. If the active tip is not the same as the index, we set the active tip to the index, and then we set the tip using the set tip prop. We divide the tip by 100 because the tip is in percentage. Let's add the handle custom tip function to the button that renders the tip button from the array. Next, we add the handle custom tip function to the custom tip button. We first set the active tip to null and then set the set custom selected to true. With that, if the custom tip is selected, all the other tip buttons are deselected. Then, we insert the custom tip in the set tip prop. Next, we add the handle custom tip blur function to the on blur event of the input field. If the user now clicks outside the input field, it will set the tip to the custom tip value. But if the custom tip value is less than zero, then it will deselect the custom tip button. The last input we need to create is the number of people input. First, create a new state inside the tip form component to store the number of people. Then create a new component called peopleamount.js. Import the users icon from the hero icons library first then destruct the people and set people props that we will pass from the tip form component. Then create a new label for the input field. Next, we create a div with a relative class. This is because we want to position the user's icon inside the input field. The icon will be wrapped inside a div with the pointer events none class. This is because we don't want the icon to be clickable. Then we add the absolute class to position the icon inside the input field. Finally, we add the input itself. The value of the input field will be the prop people and the unchanged event to the set people function. Let's import the people amount component and add it to the tip form component. The form should now resemble what you can see on the screen right now. We can add a build, select a tip, a custom tip, the act of styling on the tip buttons works, and we can add the number of people. This completes the left side of the form. Next, we will create the display card on the right. Let's create three new states inside the tip form component to store the tip per person, the total per person, and the total bill. 
then create a new component called displaycart.js. First, we destructure the tip per person, total per person, total, and reset props that we will pass to the displaycart component. Then we create a data array with the label and value for the tip amount and the total. Then we create a flex container that has a CN background color. Next, we create another flex container with a column direction where we display the tip amount per person, total per person, and the total bill. We map through the data array and display the label and value for the tip amount and total. Then we display the total bill. This div displays the label per person, and this one shows the actual value. Lastly, we have the same structure for the total bill. We also add a reset button at the bottom. That's why we had two flex containers, one for the values and one to create spacing between the values and the reset button. Import the display card component inside the tip form component and add new states as props to the display card component. Now you form should look like this now. If we change the values, those changes are not reflected in display card. So let's react to those changes inside the tip form component. We used to use a fact hook to react to those changes in the build, tip, and people state. If all the three states have a value, we first calculate the tip amount and total amount by converting the values to numbers, because remember, input values are always strings. Then we calculate the tip amount per person, total amount per person, and the total bill. We set the values for a tip per person, total per person, and total states. We will also add a reset function that resets all the states to the initial value. We pass the hand reset tip function as a prop to the display card component because we already destructured the reset prop inside the display card component. Now if we change the values, the changes are reflected in display card. If we click the reset button, the values are reset to their initial values. And that's it. We have built a tip calculator app in Next.js 13 and Tailwind CSS using client and server components. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more exciting tutorials, and hit the notification bell to stay updated. If you have any questions or suggestions, Please leave them in the comments down below. Until next time.